This one is a stop-start story, both sides. Either the fuel wasn't coming in so it wouldn't start, or it wouldn't stop anymore, which is quite interesting. Both things happen at the same time. Stick around, let's have a quick look. And in fact, our story starts in Croatia. This little thing can stop two tons of car by itself. Uh, we were on our way back from a great holiday, sailing holiday. Stopped for some supplies and at the parking lot boom, as it's about to go up, the engine just died. It just died and uh, couldn't get it started again. So got through the boom because there's a car behind us waiting and they want to get in the parking lot. What do we do? Just kept cranking the, uh, the starter motor and left it in gear and we kind of hopped and found a little parking spot. Welcome to Vino Novi Dograj, or something in Croatia. Uh, we're on our way back home and suddenly the engine just died. So we're wondering what's going on. There's enough battery power, it's cranking. We finally figured out it is the fuel pump. What do you do when you're in middle Croatia, in a tiny little village in the middle of nowhere, and it's, uh, it was a Monday, I think, and you're trying to find parts for a Land Rover? This is not really that easy. It's, you don't just phone the guys and they'll bring it to you. So what do we do? A different solution. We have an electrical fuel pump. But luckily there was a parts uh, store 10 kilometers away. We drove up and down. They had this thing in store. Basically this comes from the fuel tank. Just into the fuel pump here. Which causes a vacuum and it sucks up through here into the fuel filter. From the filter it comes down here and this is your injection pump which then has these four pipes going to each of the injector pump uh, injectors. So you're replacing the other one completely? We're bypassing yeah. the old pump completely. Ja, dan contact aan. Ja. Is het hier tussen dit? Dit is ook goed, ja. ja doe maar weer door. Ja, hij loopt. Ja, oké. Okay. Dan doe je contact maar even uit. Er zit gewoon veel lucht in. Als dat lukken wil. Ja, ja, oké. Okay. Nu maar starten. Ja. cranked and still nothing it just wouldn't start it just wouldn't start and this is also the point I need to give a shout out to the battery Optima blue top 75 amp hour that thing churned for I don't know half an hour before it started dying it just kept on going a very strong battery I must say and we thought okay that's great but it's not coming out of the injection pump it's not getting into the cylinders so it must be somewhere around the injection pump First we thought it's the injection pump which is gone, which is a big deal. It's not something you, you just uh, replace. The side of the road, it costs a lot of money. It's not the kind of money you have in your back pocket, right? Especially after your holiday, heading back home. And we spent quite a bit of time on the phone, speaking to friends and guys who knew what they were, knew these engines. And they were all like, you know, have you checked this, check that, is the fuel tank full, all of that stuff. All the fairly obvious stuff. And then uh, right at the end, someone reckoned, what about the, the fuel solenoid? What about that? And in fact, here it is. This is the new one. There you go. That's your fuel solenoid. This little thing goes, it, this plunger goes in and out with your contact. And it cuts off the fuel, which causes the engine to stop. That's a little electric uh, connection. So this whole thing here, that's a 24. But they've mounted it so closely onto the injection pump that you cannot get a spanner around it. So we ended up calling the AA in uh, Croatia, which is H-A-K, Rvatska uh, Automobile Club which is basically the RAC, uh, it's the roadside assistance. And uh, we stood in that 
parking lot for hours and uh, he was he didn't have time straight away so we had to wait a bit longer as well he finally arrived an hour later and he was uh, he concurred with our diagnosis as well so he spent an hour trying to undo it because you have to undo a bracket here put another thing away there just to try and get the spanner in there an hour later he managed to get it out and he said that little um, this little valve here there's this little spring and there was no spring in the other one which means that this thing was just permanently closed right because it needs to spring in and out it needs to spring in and out and the spring was gone who knows where the spring went so anyhow we took that out put it back in put everything back together we uh, get some power back to our uh, electric fuel pump started the engine and what do you know it runs can you believe it it was actually a combination of both things the fuel lift pump and the fuel cutoff solenoid which was a bizarre coincidence or one led to the other i'm not sure yet you tell me in the comments down below so with our little fix we we're able to start the engine running no worries running pretty well uh, but we couldn't turn the engine off because the fuel solenoid switch is uh, not connected right put in fourth gear stall it out which i don't like doing it puts a lot of strain on the transmission but it got us here and that's how we got home so what i'm going to do now is undo the fuel solenoid that was taken out and that little uh, plunger was removed and put the new one in which is right over here and then we're going to give it another go and see if we can turn off the engine and i don't know if you can see but there it is there and you have to get a spanner around there and there is no space so i had to make up another special tool number one you can see it's a little bit modified it's an old 24. some of you might think what have you done you've cut up a tool this thing's been lying in our toolbox for the last five years unused and you can see I've just chamfered off the edges there and I've thinned it out as well and that is to clear this bracket over here so we can get our spanner in there and we can turn it and look at that there we go so it's as easy as that if you have the right tools you know we don't have to undo anything and I can recommend that dimensions don't ask me but it works it's obviously not designed to be removed or installed in situ but uh, rather on a workbench or while it was being made obviously two-fingered operation it's always like the most inaccessible place isn't it there we go that's tight cool now these two cables yeah this is not exactly the way to do it but i want to prove concept that's all we want to do at the moment so there we have it check it out right down there can you see that there it is finally got that in there used the cable from the starter switch branched it off to the electrical fuel pump down to the solenoid over there and let's see uh, let's see what happens check this out start stop result don't know if you can hear that it's a mechanical fuel pump really cool and it works man i'm really chuffed for that nice and easy fix let's start it once more can't get enough of that can you well there it is guys result man we're happy with that not too much effort 
had to do a little bit of uh, cutting with the wires. What do you really need? Well, here's the old one. Nobody knows where the spring went, which is the cause of the whole problem. Anyway, I've got the new one in there, that works. What do you need for tools? A 24, heavily modified. See how thin that is? That's because of that little bracket there where this thing just doesn't want to get in there because it's, it's quite a, a major uh, spanner, the 24. It used to be. And a 5 8 this little one. That's for the little wire that uh, connects to the starter switch on your uh, starter key. 5 16 I don't know if you can see that. There we go. And what have we learned? Well, we've learned a little more about the engine. So I was not aware that the starter solenoid worked in this manner. In fact, if one of you guys out there can explain to me how this works. You get a current going in here when you uh, turn the switch on and when you turn the switch off the current disappears and there's something to do with that little spring thing. Let us all know. Show us. Give me a link to a video or something but this is something we learned on the parking lot and I'm really happy that uh, we had a lot of people to phone and thanks to Rob for sticking around and just you know he can speak German and he's got a lot of mates who can just a phone call away and eventually we managed to figure it out. So I think we had the right diagnosis, we just didn't have these things here. So these are staying in the car now, although this should last a while, hopefully. Our next project is this over here, which is still in the engine block and uh, it's not connected of course. The new one is over here. I hope it works. But anyway, I'd like it back to standard. I don't like this little electric thing in there. Just bring it back to the way it used to come from the factory because it worked for a long time, you know. Always travel with tools. Got Always got the electrical tools. We've got a huge amount of spanners. These things say no more. So whenever you're stranded somewhere, you can always fix it. Hope you enjoyed my story. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too long. We're really lucky we stopped right at the boom of a parking lot at the little actually and we've been here for six hours now. So welcome to Land Rover Land. Hope you've been entertained a little bit. Hope you've enjoyed this little story. Uh, we've got a little sunburn and we need to make a lot of miles. We're supposed to do 700 kilometers today. It's quarter past four. It's not going to happen is it? Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one and keep rolling. This is the best part of the car, isn't it? Hood up on your driveway, on the side of the road. Learn a little more about the engine. Contrary, contrary, contrary to popular belief. There it is, guys.